Hi there. In the workshop this week, I'm making a plywood bird box that's so simple I can do it with one hand tied behind my back. That's coming up next. And welcome back, actually. It's the other way around. I'm making it simple because I'm doing it one-handed. This is my entry into the one-handed makers challenge from my uh, YouTube pal, Leo Winstanley. Leo is the one-handed woodworker who runs the Handy Craft channel. I've talked about this challenge a few uh, weeks ago. There's a link in the video description down below. And I've also had a go at one-handed tool use before, and I know how difficult it can be. So I'm deliberately stacking the deck in my favor to make life easier for myself. Now I've seen a number of really, really lovely bird boxes made by my Instagram and Twitter pals, and trust me, this is not going to be one of those, but it is going to be simply constructed, and you can absolutely make this with the most basic of hand tools, if that's what you have. The design I'm using is based on one from the RSPB, the Royal Society for the Protection of Birds, and I've adapted it a little bit to suit my circumstances and the addition of a camera. There's a link down in the video description to the plans on the RSPB site, and also where you can download my plans for free if you'd like them. But let's get the lights on and dive straight into the build and I'll explain things a little bit more as we go along. Now it goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway, that a challenge like this in no way condones or encourages unsafe workshop practices. On the contrary, I found that I was working more safely than ever, not just because everything had to be clamped in place, but because of the amount of forethought and time that went into every operation. Every single cut had to be carefully planned. There are seven main components that make up this bird box, and six of them are 150mm wide, so I'm starting by ripping two 150mm strips from this piece of 12mm exterior grade, or WBP, plywood. Oh, fitting the plug-it cord is actually the one thing I am used to doing left-handed. Setting up the track and saw was easy compared to putting on a set of ear defenders one-handed. And with the first cut done, I can use that workpiece to mark the second. And after checking in with a plan, I can make the cross cuts for the base and camera shelf. Measuring and marking a length for the bird box front is surprisingly fiddly, but the small square held against the edge does make it easier. Marking the angle for the sides is a different matter though, and I had to resort to clamping the ruler down just to draw a straight line. Once done though, the cut was pretty straightforward, and I can just cut the other angled piece to length to make the second side. Okay, so far so good. Um, all this stuff I never expected. The simple act of making a pencil mark to be so complicated. But we got the cuts done. I did cut those the wrong size, which is stupid of me. Um, wrong, wrong, just forgot the, the wrong measurement, so I'll just recut those quickly. Uh, but what we've got, we've basically we've got the back, as, as per the plan here really, we've got the, the tall back. I've made the back taller because this is going on a fence and I want the, the bird box part to be up at a sort of level in my next door neighbour's apple tree. So, you know, that sort of height, which gives me about 250 mil, 10 inches to actually pop a couple of screws in to a fence post. Uh, I've also made the bird box slightly taller to accommodate the camera. But basically what we've got, we've got sort of two sides. We've got the, the back of the bird box with the spine, if you like, to attach to the fence. We've got two sides with an angle on them. I want to do a little bevel on the top of the back. So that fits nicely there as well. We'll have the base, which is going to have some little sort of drainage holes in it and we'll have a little shelf up here with a hole in it for the camera 
uh, and again I'll put that just on a little sort of ledge front and back so that that's removable and then we'll have a front like this which goes over it Oops. which I'll have the hole cut in it and a little dowel in there for the birdies to sit on and then there'll be a top over the whole thing. Let's show how I had that drawn at about oops, at about two thirty, might be a bit big. But yeah, so far so good. Uh, a little bit more fiddling on the cutting and then we can get uh, get the holes drilled I think. I think. I'm using a digital angle finder to, you know, find the angle, then subtracting this from 90 to set the bevel on the saw, and then making the cut on the spine. So, not bad. Uh, I'll cut a couple of more small strips of that to use on the on the lid on the roof part and then I think that's all the cutting down apart from the roof wow okay I never expected that cutting little strips like this little just a couple little bits of strip wood for the camera platform to sit on that was such a fiddle because you can't hold it with one hand and cut it with the other you've got to clamp it down and clamping tiny little pieces like this was so hard I guess I could have used double-sided tape or something um, God, yeah but that took ages just cutting those two little bits crazy I've marked where I want the holes drilled and I'm starting with a 32mm access hole in the front face. Chucking a spade bit in the drill one-handed is pretty easy with a ratcheting chuck. And swapping it out for a smaller brad point bit for the drain holes works fine too. Changing the hole saw in the arbor though, that was something else, and I had to resort to one of my smaller vices to get this done. Heading in the right direction. But once done it worked just fine and I had a pretty clean 44mm hole in the camera shelf. Now I wanted a little piece of dowel for a perch but I didn't have any so I decided to make some first at the bandsaw carefully ripping down some 10mm strip wood, then planing it squarish, then knocking off the corners, chucking it into the drill and finally running it through a dowel maker. So all things considered, I'd say that's actually not half bad. A little bit of sanding on that and it's come up a treat. So uh, I have no idea what size it is. <laughs> Probably some kind of crack pot in between your size. But I'm sure we can use that as our dowel for our little perch. Uh, and then we can get that drilled in. A quick sand over on everything. And then we can start getting it uh, nailed together. Huh. Pleased with that. A quick rub over of the parts that the sander can't reach, and then it's onto the assembly. Everything is just glued and pinned together. I'm using an 18 gauge by 25mm brads for this in my electric Maestri pin gun. And I'm starting by fixing the sides to the back.
then the base with the drainage holes in. Then I'm fitting the little strips to the inside faces of the bird box front and back. This is where the camera shelf will sit. And finally the front gets fitted as well. You can see where I've also drilled a hole for the dowel perch. The brads are plenty strong enough to keep everything together while the glue sets, so I've upended and centred the box on the lid, and I'm gluing on the angled strips that I cut earlier to the front and the rear. And once they've had a few minutes for the glue to start to grab, I can cut and fit the side pieces, and again, these are just glued in place. With everything set, the completed box gets a final sanding, not so easy. And then a coat of teak oil to give it a bit of extra protection, and also to tone the colour down. Again, not so easy one-handed. You can also see the little bracket that I attached to the back, just to make my life easier when I'm fitting it onto my garden fence. Hard to imagine a more blotchy <laughs> patch of <laughs> finish. Next day now and I'm driving a few screws into some pre-drilled holes just to keep them located and make the installation easier. Then it's time to fit the camera. This is a simple little all-in-one Wi-Fi camera, motion detector and IR light that you can pick up off eBay for 15 or 16 pounds. You can buy them direct from China for about a fiver if you don't mind waiting for delivery. And they're sometimes referred to as spy cameras in the descriptions, though I think any self-respecting spy would be shown the door if they turned up to work with one of these. It doesn't have an internal battery, so I'm powering it from a bullet-type power bank that I already have, and there are links in the video description to both of these items. I have this one set to only record video when it detects motion, so the battery should last a decent amount of time. So with the battery and camera taped in place, I can screw the lid on. And then it's time to get it all outside and onto the fence. The bracket really helps keep it in place here while I drive home the screws. And once fixed, all we can do is wait for nature to take its course. And we're going to leave it there for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I know I certainly enjoyed making the bird box, even one-handed. And thanks again to Leo for coming up with the challenge. Uh, it's a great idea, and it's always interesting to face new challenges to the way we work, especially when you're trying to do so safely. It makes you think so much more about the processes involved. I've got to be honest, having tried the one-handed tool use thing before, I wasn't really expecting any major problems. And I've got to say, very few of the tools themselves gave me any real issues. It was the little things that drove me crazy, not being able to easily mark a pencil line with a ruler. It hadn't occurred to me that that could be a problem. Having to clamp everything down to make the simplest of cuts on the mitosaur as well, or even just getting teak oil out of a bottle and onto a cloth were challenges that I really could have done without. I was surprised at, as well at how difficult my favourite quick clamps were to use one-handed, and all of these things combined to make everything take a long, long time. On this video, I've also tried to use the camera one-handed as well, and I've got to say that was absolutely horrific, as I'm just not set up for that at all. And it's also the reason why you might have seen the mic in a couple of shots as well. Uh, there's just too many other things going on. I said at the start that after my last one-handed video, I'd never been so happy to take my right hand out of my pocket and use it again. And I feel exactly the same here, and I have the utmost of respect for Leo and everyone else who can continue with their woodwork with their making 
under such trying circumstances. If you haven't already done so, then do take a look at Leo's channel. There's a link down below, as well as a link to the One Handed Makers Challenge playlist when that becomes available. So do check that out or search YouTube for the hashtag One Handed Makers Challenge. That's it for this week's video, though. Thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to subscribe for more weekly workshop adventures, and I'll see you next time when we'll be back on the regular Friday schedule. Take care.